Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of the Debs Good Grocery. Beautiful day out here today. We took the Debs Good Grocery Mobile for a ride up to the store to get some ingredients. But what are we going to do today? That's right. What are we going to do today? I'm glad you asked. And we're going to do some bacon today. Something a little different. So let me get her parked and situated. And we'll head on inside to the kitchen to see what we're baking today on Dems Good Groceries. We'll see you inside. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Dems Good Groceries Kitchen. And another edition. Today, we're going to do some bacon, y'all. We're going to do a pineapple upside down cake. That's right. So very excited. First time we're doing any bacon on the show. But before we get started, a very big thank you to our new subscribers, uh, Marinell and Graffia uh, Bodie. Thank you very much for subscribing. We do appreciate it. Uh, in addition to Eli, our buddy Eli out in Tampa, Florida. Thank you so much, Eli, for that. I got gumbo coming your way, brother. Stick around. We got gumbo coming your way. Uh, to Michelle out in Georgia on the front lines out there, making sure that these COVID stuff is under control. We're going to do something involving pickles for you. So make sure you stick around for that. And of course, we got to take care of the fur babies next week. All that coming up in future episodes of Them Goods Groceries. So make sure you stick around. So before we get started, what are we going to do? That's right. Wash them hands. All right. We got our hands washed and again, thank you all for subscribing, the kind words and the shares as we get through this COVID-19 quarantine cooking business. We're all cooking together. Okay, so to get started here, folks, uh, somebody said, by the way, that I don't say okay enough in the videos, so I mean, we're gonna try and fix that. And, uh, and bam, okay and bam, those are, oh boom, I'm sorry, okay and boom are the two things we gotta work on. So. For those of you who don't think I say it enough, okay, we're going to go ahead and do it some more, okay? Boom! Here we go. So, to get started, we're going to preheat our oven to 375 degrees, okay? Today we're going to be using a cast iron skillet, 10 inch cast iron skillet is what we're going to use to bake this cake in, okay? Remember, it is upside down. So the first thing that we're going to do, means to pause all your ingredients together. You'll notice that we have some nice cut pineapple rings, some crushed pineapple, a little brown sugar, some egg yolk and whites, some milk. Uh, we got some zest of a lemon, some vanilla, pineapple juice, sugar, flour, butter, all ready to go. So with that being said, the first thing we're going to do is come on over to our stove and get the pan going. With our brown sugar, with our juice, and that's all we need. The first thing we're going to do here, folks, is take one stick or four ounces of butter, and we're going to put that down in our in our skillet. You'll notice we have four ounces of softened butter. This I left out overnight. We're going to use that later on down the road. So keep in mind, softened butter, okay, and then your regular butter. This doesn't have to be softened. So we'll set this back over there. So what we're going to do is get that butter. One, that's four ounces of butter. Go ahead and get that melting down in your pan, okay. And again, I'm cooking at about medium heat here. You don't want to burn the butter. That's not what we're trying to do here. We just want to get it good and melted. Okay, so we got our butter melted. We're going to add at this point here our pineapple juice, and that is two teaspoons. And then I'm going to add my, and this, I'm using dark brown sugar here. So we're going to add our brown sugar. Now I'm going to Kind of get this melted together down here, all the brown sugar and the butter and the pineapple juice. Kind of get all of that going. All right. Now we're going to move back over here for this next part. We're going to go ahead and take come that back off. over here. Now we got our butter and our brown sugar. Now, what we're going to do from here is we're going to take our pineapple slices and I have eight to be exact here and I'm gonna set those down in the pan following the outside of the pan now don't worry about the blank spaces because we're gonna do something with that here in just a second so we're gonna just line these up like this along the perimeter of your pan you should look something like this and then you can go right in the middle. And this is essentially what we're looking for. 
So we want them just like that. Now the next thing we're gonna do is take our, so we'll get those into it. We're gonna take the crushed pineapple and we're gonna pack that. And I'm gonna use a little spoon to do this. We're gonna pack it into these empty spaces around here, okay? So we'll take that pineapple and pack it in to those spaces just like that. So you wanna fill all those, it's kinda like doing brick and mortar here, folks. A little brick and mortar. Just take your pineapple, fill in. Try not to disturb the syrup you got going on there too much, but kinda pack in your empty spaces like this. So we're gonna do this all across. All right. So we get all those spaces filled in just like that. And what I'm doing is kind of taking the, the back end of the spoon, just give it a little tap, you know, and kind of flatten it out, smooth it. Again, you don't want to upset your syrup too much. Just kind of, you want to keep it in there. We just kind of tap it down like that, nice and smooth. Okay, so once we get that ready, we're gonna hold off on that. And now it's time to do what? Folks, I thought you never asked, but since you did, I'm happy to tell you, we're gonna make the batter. So to make the batter, we're gonna move to our ingredients for that. So we're gonna get ourselves a mixing bowl, one stainless steel mixing bowl. It's pretty hard, like my producer's head. I mean, you gotta be careful when you say one of these things, I tell you. Okay, so now we're gonna use a sifter, okay? Old fashioned sifter. Just like that, and we're going to now take our flour. Now the secret here is you wanna sift in your flour, you wanna sift in your baking powder, and your salt. So I'm gonna put all this in my sifter, and we're gonna sift it through all the way down. Okay, and this, again, this part is important to do. So we're gonna sift it all together, just right there, and you'll notice as we're sifting, I'm sifting everything together. It doesn't take long for that to go through. Okay, just give it a couple little, you can always give it a couple little taps like that. Little pro tip here, make sure that your sifter is dry. If your sifter is wet, this is gonna be a catastrophe, folks. I mean, we're talking, this is gonna be really bad. So you don't wanna do that. So once you get it all sifted, and you'll notice it's nice, take a look at that, it's nice and, and smooth in there. You see that, nice and no lumps, bumps, clumps, twitters, or anything like that. So once we get all of that together, then what we're gonna do is mix our batter. So our cream butter and sugar at medium speed. So we're gonna come to a different mixing bowl over here. Well, we're going to take our softened butter, and you'll notice that this is very, very soft when I put the mixer to it. Best thing you can do, if you know you're going to do this, leave it out overnight, prepare it, you know, uh, and that way it just, you'll see real how it falls together very, very easily. So we're going to take our butter and our sugar, and what I like to do is kind of just, whoa, don't kick it up too, too, too much, but... We're gonna get that going. Kind of break your butter down like that, and then I'm gonna slowly add my sugar as we go. And we're just gonna kind of blend that cream, I mean that uh, butter and that sugar together. on a medium speed, okay? And that's about what we're looking for, okay? Just like that. We're gonna stop there. Then what we're gonna do, folks, is come over here, and now you'll notice that I have two eggs together in here. But all I really want out of here is going to be the yolk, because we need to take the yolk, and so what we're gonna do so I'm going to show you a neat little trick. This could save your life one day, folks. Listen, I watched a lot of MacGyver as a child. Okay, the family knows this. And I seen him do this with a Coke bottle. So I was like, you know what? I said to myself, self, we got to figure it out. And self said, we'll give it a shot. So here we are. One, this is a Diet Coke bottle. All I'm going to do is take my Diet Coke bottle. 
and I'm going to compress the sides, okay? And I'm gonna get right on the yolk, and I'm gonna let go, whoop, just like that. You'll notice it gives me just the yolk. So I'm gonna add my yolk over here, boom. And then we'll do that one more All time. Right, so we got our yolks. Then we're gonna take the zest of a lemon, some lemon zest, and add that right in there. And we're gonna take our vanilla and add that in there. So our vanilla, our zest, and our two egg yolks, just like that. We're gonna put all that in there. And I'm gonna kinda of slowly mix it together. Okay, then once we get there, then we're gonna take and do, uh, we did that for about a minute, by the way. You're gonna blend that for about a minute. Then I'm gonna low close my um, milk. Well, actually, I'm gonna do my flour first and then milk, that way. So we're gonna go ahead and take our flour and I'm gonna slowly begin to add this into my mix. You want to do this slowly so you don't throw it all over the place. You gotta slowly start to add that in. Now we're gonna slowly put some uh, add our milk in there. Gotta bring that together. We're gonna add a little more of our flour. And a little more of our milk. We got slow as key here, folks. Slow and steady as key. Now this is gonna form a thick batter, so don't freak out if it starts. It's gonna be thick. This is a very thick batter. This is not a soupy or liquidy batter whatsoever. This is pretty thick, like my father would tell you my skull was. So very, very kind of just get it going. And then what I like to do is every now and then take your spatula and get your edges here. Okay, get your edges and kind of mix it, get all that in and make sure that you get, you can see how thick this batter is. And that's what you want. You don't want it to be watery or loose. And again, don't freak out with the level of, of thickness of this batter. It is designed to be that way. So we're going to give it another good mixing. Make sure we get everything. Right, you can kind of take a look at that there. And that's the consistency we're going for, okay? So we're gonna set that aside. Okay, so now in a clean, dry bowl, we're gonna take our egg whites, two egg whites, and we're gonna beat these to just above firm peaks. What do I mean by peaks? Thought you never ask. So when you beat egg whites, what starts to happen is they start to thicken up and they start to turn into what's known as a meringue. But before we get to those real big uh, peaks, we're gonna stop. We don't wanna get it too thick, but just somewhere in between. So what I'm gonna do is, you'll notice I'm using a whisk on my very old fashioned blender here. Julia Child would be proud. And I'm gonna just beat these uh, yolks, uh, whites until we get to where they're peaking. Okay, so you kinda see here how we're we're just there. See how it kind of raises up like that? That's peaking. And it's very important, I forgot to mention this earlier, the whisk it allows air to get in there. So the air makes this a lot easier and work faster. So again, you want to use the whisk attachment. This is an old fashioned 19, I don't know, 90 something blender. You don't have a mixer. You don't need to have anything fancy. So now what I'm going to do is take about one third of, of this. So take one third of this. And I'm gonna, going to go back over here, and we're gonna do this slowly in thirds, okay? So we're gonna come back here to our, our batter, and then what I'm going to do is go one third of our egg whites here. So uh, we'll just take and go about like that. Just like that. Then, we're gonna go ahead and get that blended together. Uh, see how, how that batter is nice and beautiful and fluffy there. 
And that is what we're going for. And you'll notice, if you come in, I'm going to just kind of scrape the edges here and make sure that everything did in fact blend. But you kind of see that batter and it's, it's the egg whites have it to where it's kind of fluffy, like me, you know, fluffy. So what we're gonna do now is I'm going to very carefully spoon this batter into my pan. So we'll come back over there. So how did the batter get that fluffy, you ask? No problem. So remember when we were spooning a third at a time of those egg whites in there? That's the trick. You want to allow time for air to get in. You want to allow time for the batter to blend. And if you dump everything together at one time, it's not allowing that those moments of very valuable air. You know, like every time that I speak, very valuable air. You know what I mean? Okay. So anyway, what we're going to do now is I'm going to spoon our batter carefully and slowly because again what we don't want to do is upset our beautiful situation we got going on here so I'm gonna take my spoon again and just kinda kinda start to flatten it all out just like that around those edges and components okay so we got a flat nice smooth working area we're gonna start to spoon our nice fluffy batter in. And I'm going to go ahead and you'll notice that when I do this, I'm, what I'm going to do here is put a lot down at one time, but I'm going to keep going on top and on top and on top and on top. But it's going to naturally spread throughout the pan. But again, I don't want to upset my uh, pineapple, crushed pineapple or any of the other beautiful things that we have going on in there. So we'll keep spooning right on top. And I'm going to switch over to my handy dandy spatula. And then once we get it all done, now, now you can kind of try and gently. You want to kind of do this gently, but you, now we have to even it out across the pan. Very delicate, very smooth operations here. And I like to kind of drag up to the, to the side of the pan here. And if you do miss a little bit, it's okay but we want a nice, we want to try and get it kind of as smooth as we can. And if you get a little bit, if a little bit of it mixes, it's, it's, it's okay, it's not the end of the world. But what we want is that nice flat surface you see there. And that's it, once we get that nice flat surface there, what's the next thing we're gonna do? <laughs> that's a great question. We're gonna go into the oven. We're gonna go into the oven for about 35 to 45 minutes at 375 degrees, folks. So we're gonna go ahead and take our pan and into the oven we go. Center of the oven is where you want that to be. So now we'll put that in there. We're gonna let it do its little boom, bada bing, bada boom magic. And we'll be back to show you the end result on our beautiful pineapple upside down cake with Devin Goods Groceries comes back. Hey everybody, Josh from Dems Good Groceries here with you. So, a little commercial break. We had some leftover pineapple in this edition of the Pineapple Upside Down Cake. So what do you do? We don't waste anything, right? Well, when you're from New Orleans and you got extra pineapple, well, you make pina coladas. So here we go, folks. Real simple. One blender. I'm going to take my ice. I'm going to take my coconut. This is good old shaved sweetened coconut. Then I'm going to take about, let's see, one, two, uh, yeah, about three tablespoons of that. Then I'm going to put a little bit of pineapple juice in there. And the most important thing, this is Old New Orleans Rum from the Old New Orleans Rum Distillery, folks, down in the heart of New Orleans, Louisiana. Right there, it's the oldest operating rum distillery in America, and it's still there. Delta cane sugar is what they use to make it. So we're going to go ahead and, you know, we do a one, two, three, four. How's your mom and them? Just kidding. A little extra and a little bit for good luck in there. And we're going to blend all that together just like that. Boom. On top you go. And there we have it. And, of course, a little bit of homemade simple syrup there to give it a little bit of sweetness. Give it a couple pulses. 
Make sure we're good to go. Whoa. It's live. It's happy. Things are happening. Boom. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what you do with your leftover pineapple and a little bit of coconut. And of course, we'll put a cherry in there for good luck. Cheers. We'll see you back on Devon's Good Groceries here in a few. Okay, folks, welcome back to Devon's Good Groceries. So all we did was after 45 minutes in the oven at 375, we took our cake pan, put it on top of the pan, and flipped it. Voila. Before you do that, you want to take a knife and work around the edges of your perimeter, of your perimeter of the pan. So take your knife and kind of work around the edges. Once you get it nice and loose and everything is ready to come out, put the cake pan on top and flip. Bada bing, bada boom. There you go. So the last thing we're going to do is here I have some maraschino cherries that I've cut in half. These are regular, just maraschino cherries. I cut them in half and I'm going to take and place them inside of the rings on top of the kick, just like that. This inside there. Whoa. One of them run away on me there. Whoa. Just like that. And there you have it, folks. Now that is our pineapple upside down cake, right out of the skillet, right out of the oven, and into your hole. I hope you enjoy it. We're gonna taste it a little later. This is actually going someplace special later on. And uh, we'll give it a shot, taste it, get some other folks to taste it. Less than 10, we'll all be six feet apart, I promise. So we'll give it a shot later on and let you know how it all turns right, folks, out. Thanks again so much for joining us here on Dem's Good Groceries. We appreciate it. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Click the little bell down there. Get alerted as soon as these videos come out uh, for your viewing pleasure. So while we're quarantined, just because we can't be together doesn't mean we can't cook together. And I thank you so much, folks, for all the kind words. Again, I can't say that enough. Make sure you thank a frontline worker. Make sure you thank a medical professional, the truck drivers, and those people in the grocery store that are providing the groceries for us to be able to make them good groceries here for you. Till next time, be kind to one another. Be good to one another. Hug those fur babies. We'll see you next time on Dems Good Groceries.